डियर प्यूर यूरोलॉजी फेसबुक व्यूअर्स गुड गुड इवनिंग टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज तुलियम फाइबर लेजर एन्यूक्लिएशन ऑफ द प्रोस्टेट कैन वी डू विथ एंटी प्लेटलेट्स और एंटी कोएगलेट्स हानेस्टली इफ यू सी लास्ट फाइव इयर्स आई वॉज ऑब्जर्विंग दैट वाई वी हैव टू डू एन्यूक्लिएशन वेन टी यू आर पी इज देयर आई हैड ए स्ट्रांग फीलिंग टिल आई बॉट द टू फ्लैट the thulium fiber laser previously homium laser uh, 100 watts 120 watts was there for last 10 to 20 years some people are doing extraordinarily well some people have stopped doing even if the mission is there we don't know the reason because i also don't have experience with homium laser but somehow majority of the people feel that turp is good but as we start opening up and doing these cases we feel that in a nucleation one distinct advantage is the bleeding will be less okay if the gland is not removed fully uh, it is not a problem patient will pass urine into urp nicely it's a good surgery there is no doubt it's gold standard but if you do more than 80 grams gland even for the senior even if he cuts fast amount of the bleeding is significant honestly if you go on the post operative period hemoglobin fall will be more then uh, the thulium fiber laser is now 60 watts has come which is slightly lesser costly slightly less nahi uh, 50% less than 100 watts laser then people started you using it by by seeing some seniors one among such seniors is uh, today speaker dr ashish seni Th- these people started early uh, with the thulium fiber laser because they are already know the homium laser enucleation or thulium yag laser enucleation and they also do end block resection of bladder tumor with that knowledge they started doing slowly this uh, group of people who are doing thulium fiber laser enucleation when we have done workshop nine different surgeons uh, all have finished uh, nobody has significant problem uh, that day three cases of uh, homium were shown by very seniors and uh, four cases of uh, thulium fiber laser was seen by another uh, four people the another advantage is thulium fiber laser whenever you touch it coagulates there is it look wise it doesn't look well but procedure wise uh, absolutely bleeding less in that context uh, we are talking whether anti platelets nowadays everybody using aspirin clopidogrel maximum 7 days we are stopping sometimes uh, within one year three months if they have done only 75 mg aspirin we have to proceed so to listen all this today speaker as i mentioned dr ashish shaini who is very close in fact recently i have been to delhi and uh, i have stayed with him and great uh, uh, pleasure uh, seeing his hospital he made his own hospital in delhi which is not an easy task he did from all india institute of medical sciences he, he to to flip in anticoagulant patient is his topic today and he is the director and founder excel advanced urology center gk1 uh, new delhi greater kailositis uh, ex director and hod department of urology primus super speciality hospital chanakyapuri new delhi ex senior consultant urology sarj stone ex assistant professor of urology aims areas of interest naturally endo urology c he got cmc ludhiana best poster prize during 2009 uh, narjun and uh, awarded gr chavla gold medal for the best resident in aims 2010 selected as american urology association resident scholar 2010 and attended aau annual meeting in san francisco in 2010 urological association of asia urology youth fellowship 2016 review of indian journal of urology urology internationalis and international journal of urology uh, japanese urology association fellowship in renal transplant in year 2015 international forum for young urologists beijing china also he attended in 2012 see the, these are all very good academic career apart from that he is a very good cyclist because lot of the urologists does not have extra curricular activities he is passionate about his cycle when i have seen his cycle at his house it is 17 lakhs and uh, i don't know what is inside whether gold or ca- uh, the copper or silver but he cycle for 300 kilometers 400 kilometers regularly that's great passion it keeps you healthy and uh, we can understand uh, how much he determined uh, when you go for two days on uh, cycling like that i am very impressed recently we became very close friends i thought uh, uh, in the workshop also he did well recently he demonstrated end block resections also in narjon uh, as well as the other conferences with this introduction ashish thank you once again uh, for uh, um, uh, coming to this program
and please uh, take your time and enlighten because a lot of juniors are taking 35 watts and uh, 60 watts thulium fiber laser. They also wanted to try. So please uh, enlighten as if you are telling to the juniors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And it's a pleasure to be on this great platform. And the platform has changed the way the urology has been practiced. A lot of interesting videos, a lot of stuff where we fi find that uh, people can gain knowledge, especially the residents as well as those who are learning laparoscopy. So, so this uh, pure urology program is something which is a phenomenal thing which uh, Dr. Vadi has started. And I think for everybody who has joined has benefited and those who haven't, they should join as soon as possible. So today we are talking about uh, two flap in anticoagulated patients. Uh, am I, uh, my screen is visible. Yeah, yeah just it's coming, not at, uh, share the screen, share the screen. Uh, you have not shared the screen, I think. Below button, share the screen will be there. Okay, so now it is there. Ah, uh, yes, it has come now. Okay. Oh, yeah, perfect. Clarity is good and voice is good. You proceed. Enlarge the screen. Yes, done. So, uh, today we'll be talking on uh, two flap in anticoagulated patients. So, uh, basically, TFL is a new laser. You, you should not confuse it with the, the old YAG laser, which is a thulium uh, YAG laser. It's a new pulse laser, which is small, and it has a wavelength of 1940 nanometer. The wavelength is somewhat smaller than Holmium, which is 2.20 nanometer. But that difference, small difference, increases the absorption of water of thulium fiber by four times compared to Holmium laser. So these are, are important things which we have to keep in mind when we are talking about the coagulative benefit and how it is a better coagulant. So uh, looking at it, the most important uh, thing is the water optical penetration depth. So if we look at the optical penetration depth of holmium, this is around 0.314 millimeter versus it is 1.4, that is 0 0.077 millimeter in TFL. And uh, this is uh, four times less than the holmium laser. Now, why it is important? Penetration depth is basically a measure of how deep a light or any electromagnetic radiation can penetrate into a matter. And when uh, it penetrates the depth at which the radiation intensity will fall by one E. That's the penetration depth. So what happens is that the laser beam, when it passes through water, uh, with each successful uh, factor of E, it will be reduced by 63%. So this is uh, a figure where it is 37% versus it is 1.7%. Now what is happening is that when it is Yes. So uh, at one millimeter, the holmium yak pulse will still have four percent of its value versus it will be not seen in a uh, TFL. So it has a better coagulative as well as ablative potential. That is the most important thing that because of the optical penetration depth of TFL, uh, it can actually cause an ablation into the tissue at a much lesser threshold. So a TFL laser at 20 watt may be similar to a Holmium laser at 60 watt. So that is important for uh, juniors who are trying to have a 30 watt, a 35 watt laser. Even with a 35 watt, you can actually do almost majority of your glands, which are up to 60, 70, 80 grams. Above that, you may need a high power laser so that you are able to complete the job in the given time frame. But less of complications. So important is what are anticoagulants and what are antiplatelets. So anticoagulants are actually blood thinners which prevent or reduce coagulation by prolonging the clotting time. And antiplatelet drugs are uh, somewhere they cause the initial uh, breakage in the pathway of coagulation, the thrombin formation. So an antiplatelet drug is something uh, which is also known as a platelet agglutination inhibitor or a platelet aggregation inhibitor. So this is a class of pharmaceutical which is going to decrease the platelet aggregation as well as inhibit the thrombus formation. Whereas anticoagulants, which most commonly are warfarin, and uh, uh, these are the ones which will actually inhibit the specific pathway of coagulation cascade. 
So we need to uh, uh, define what is an anticoagulant or an antiplatelet. Antiplatelets are like aspirin, which is a COX inhibitor, as well as there are a certain antiplatelets like clopidogrel. Now coming over to these, uh, warfarin is something, uh, the major classes of anticoagulants would be warfarin, heparin, and then there are newer drugs like direct thrombin inhibitors and factor 10A inhibitors. So can we do enucleation when the patient is on these antiplatelets? Should we switch these patients to heparin? Do, should we do a therapy where we are actually, uh, from an oral, we are putting these patients to heparin because we know that there is an antidote for heparin and so it can be reversed. So from, for these, which we will be talking in the upcoming slides. Now, uh, this is the first clinical case. This patient was actually uh, taking teclodipine and ecosprint. So we didn't stop the diplo, uh, the ecosprint in this patient. And uh, this was a, a gland which was, you can see there is marked vascularity. The important thing is that uh, whenever you are uh, dealing with such a gland, you should use less power. Less power will actually have a better hemostasis. The other thing is uh, the difference when we are doing uh, any nucleation with TFL versus holmium is that holmium is a desiccating pulse laser. So there is desiccation of the tissue and therefore there is a forward spread of the energy. As we have talked initially that in TFL there is hardly any energy which is uh, forward spreading. So it is a direct cutting energy and therefore has a better coagulation. Now in this patient, despite uh, most of the time we are actually afraid of that whether he is going to bleed or not. And therefore, we are much more careful. And it may lead to a shorter, uh, a longer operative time when we are dealing with such patients who are on anticoagulation. There are certain pumpers which were there and uh, these pumpers can be directly coagulated. So in Holman, you have to defocus and then coagulate. While in TFL, you do not need to defocus. You have to just be on the pumper and uh, you can coagulate it very easily. Uh, usually a coagulation may not be required when you are doing these procedures. Uh, one or two pumpers may require a coagulation. So this is, uh, this patient had like two such ones and then we do a coagulation. The other thing is that you avoid pushing the gland with the resectoscope when you are doing such cases or even with the patients who are not Otherwise, not on coagulation, anticoagulants, because whenever you are pushing, there are certain fine capillaries which are uh, uh, in the prostatic capsule and that may bleed. So instead of pushing, use the laser energy to do the thing. It's a very fine cutting laser. So the cutting is very fast with helium. And we are doing this procedure uh, at around 35 watts of energy. Can, so, you tell the, can you tell the frequency and the energy setting if we are using here? Sir, we are basically using uh, 2 and 15. 2 and 15? 2 and 15. So that's 30. Uh, you, can use, uh, you can use 220 also, 40. Okay. So recently I came to know that I, I, I was using 1 and 10. For a, uh, sorry, 1 and uh, 40. 130, 140. Like that recently, uh, even Bumsi told that 2, 2.5 can be used very fast and coagulative and yeah. uh, less frequency, more hemostatic, but it looks little charring, but bleeding will be very less. Yeah. So basically, so charring also depends upon where you are keeping the fiber. Yeah, yeah. They told that if you keep fiber away a little bit, charring yeah. will be less and you move faster. Yes, yes. So yeah. this is one patient. Coming over to the second patient, this is important for the the beginners that whenever you are, so one was an end block which I have shown you. This is the normal group, which is the most important when you are starting the enucleation. So in this, always try to develop the floor and you need to go from three o'clock till nine o'clock at the bladder neck. Why it is important is that the majority of the vessels would be at five and seven. So you are coagulating them. And when you are doing this from three to nine, you are actually looking at the uretic orifice. You are not finding them per se, or in the end, you may even injure the uretic orifice. So better to look at them up front. So once you have done this initial step, you are not 
going to cause any damage to the uretic orifice as well as to the trigone. And you will have a better control throughout your enucleation when you are doing this job. So for the beginners who are starting with a two lobe technique, go from the middle till three and nine o'clock and let the adenoma hang on these positions. Now, this is the third case. This patient was actually uh, on antiplatelet drugs. We haven't stopped them. This is where we have uh, done many uh, permutation combination of, uh, we have done 130 also to, and we have gone up till 50 watts also in this case. What I found was that the bubbling effect when this laser is used is more when we are dealing at a lower frequency. As we, as we increase it, the bubbling effect becomes less, the charring becomes more. So this is the patient where we are doing a end block resection. This is around 50 grams of prostate and he is uh, 72 years. He was recently diagnosed with a triple vessel disease and uh, he was on aspirin. We haven't stopped it. And uh, usually in, in, uh, I've done around 10 cases now, the irrigation as well as the discharge uh, time is increased by, irrigation is increased by almost eight to nine hours and the discharge rate from the hospital, usually we, uh, we keep them for one day. In these patients, we are keeping them for two days. So as you can see that is, uh, instead of pushing through the beak, you can push it through the fiber if you want or rest use the laser energy and this is a, a 30 down approach where you are able to lift also and then do the enucleation. Uh, the principle for the, base, for the base of the bladder everybody recommends this 30 up only na? Yeah. but you don't go into the capsule. Yes. So basically, everybody, uh, everybody does this. So even sir, I, I even I start from apex. It's always uh, down. Uh, the approach is like this. The yeah. six o'clock usually is only at the veru when we are just doing the first thing. Okay. It is a down approach uh, throughout. Throughout, yeah. So basically, when there is a thirty degree down, the field of vision is one eighty degree in front of you. Okay, very good. And so that way, you will not perforate uh, the capsule. Yeah. So you don't perforate the capsule. When you are reaching up to the bladder neck, you can reorient yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so basically, uh, this is the different uh, mutation and permutation which one can use. So, despite we were thinking that it may bleed, we could not find any bleeders per se. So, that is the beauty of enucleation that when we are in the correct plane, uh, whatever the patient uh, condition is, usually you will be doing a good job and uh, the bleeding would not be there. Yeah. It will always be there if you are pushing too much or if you are going through the adenoma. If you are going through the adenoma, uh, if the bleeding initially is more than it means that you are you have not reached to the plane and therefore it is bleeding. So uh, you have to reorient yourself. Most important would be that uh, make uh, identifiable landmarks like on the, the black thing is the is a bladder neck, so you reorient yourself and then come back. So uh, from a plane of known plane to an unknown plane, you can go. Do not go from two unknown planes together. You will mess up creating multiple tracks. So this is how it can be done. And uh, the other thing is that once you have completed the procedure for the initial thing, if you feel that there is bleeding, and there are certain bleeders you are not able to control, you can switch over to a simple loop and you can, uh, before going for a morselation, the cavity should not have active bleeders. Some bleeders may stop just by the water flow. So uh, when uh, the morselation should be done under perfect vision, because that is a very dangerous proposition. If you are having a bloody vision and then you are doing a morselation, people can uh, do, there can be a nightmare. When people have even sucked the bladder if that is done. And even, uh, so that is important that uh, have a loop ready. And if you feel that there are bleeders which are there, which needs to be tackled, it can be tackled. Uh, and then you proceed with the morselation. So one, uh, so this is the entire gland which has been, so this is 
now at six and then I'm reorienting. So basically you can go to six and then reorient yourself. And then again, do, do not push the gland at this point of time because, if, because here the, the capsule is very thin and you can uh, easily cause a subtrigonation. You are thinking that you are at the end of the procedure, but uh, that this is the time where you need to be much more careful so that there are no chances of any complications. So my take is that go slow when you are doing this and uh, be more precise, take your time and so that it is beneficial to the patient. Now we are reorienting again at six o'clock and then we will be taking this now. So this is the entire process. Fantastic. Uh, we are. You think that it is finishing, but lot of gland will be there. Yes. As you said. You, yes. you so basically, uh, so uh, you, the laser fiber should not be inside the bladder. It should be at the bladder neck only so that you are able to take the fine attachments out and you do not uh, go into the near the urinary process. So that should be the aim that we do not take anything which is not required. So this is, these are the, now the flimsy additions. And uh, one can see that the procedure now is completed. The other thing is that uh, when you are buying a morcillator, an oscillating morcilloscope by Wolf or by Biorad would be better than the, the front and the back by the other companies because, uh, so one can see that the uretic orifices are uh, far and this is, these are, so he has a lot of stones when we started, it's a case of prosthetic, Prostatitis with a lot of calculi. And this is the gland which is seen, both the lobes. And uh, then you do the morcellation. So, morcellation has to be done with full view. There should be a halo, so this black thing should be all around whenever you are morcellating so that you uh, do not take the bladder into your jaws. If you have taken a bladder into your jaw, just uh, open up the uh, there is an attachment, so you just open up that thing, press the pedal, and the, the, the will go off. So this is uh, this is the procedure. Now coming over to the literature review. Now this is one of the papers which came into benign prostatic hyperplasia of wound. How it is after surgical removal in subjects who are on anticoagulants or antiplatelet therapy. So this is a meta analysis, and they have around three thousand five hundred patients in this meta analysis. They have done a wonderful job in this thing. So uh, uh, this is what you are seeing on your right is a forest plot. The forest plot is basically, uh, it gives you the odds ratio. Odds ratio is whether uh, the bleeding would be more or less. So anything on the line is neutral. Anything on the right is the thing which is favoring bleeding. So in all these, uh, uh, all these analysis where the patients were on antiplatelet and anticoagulants, uh, they found that the bleeding complication was more so uh, in patients who were on anticoagulants who underwent the therapy. Coming over to blood transfusion, almost all these patients uh, uh, required more blood transfusion than the, their normal counterparts, the controls. And uh, the operating time, this is a study which I was not able to figure out why, but the operating time was actually less. In these uh, majority of these studies, there were only six of them who said that the operating time was more. Maybe the, the patient selection or the weight of the gland may, may be a factor in it. And uh, a smaller gland may take lesser time or maybe you are much more quicker, you want to do the job quickly. That may be the reason. Coming over to the length of the hospital stay, the length of the hospital stay was found to be more in these patients because the irrigation time was more in almost all these patients. The catheterization time was also on the higher side in all the subgroup analysis on the forest plot. So uh, we could not find anything uh, on thulium laser enucleation of prostate with anticoagulants per se as a PubMed index publication because uh, it's a new thing which has come. So the data is still, uh, I had one of the talks with Vamsi and Vamsi said that in his uh, he is putting up one of his papers in uh, Indian Journal of Urology regarding that, but uh, currently there is hardly any data. So this is uh, where a holmium laser enucleation was done in patients uh, on antivirusion therapy. And what they found was that uh, there was a higher 90-day complication rate in 
both the categories but there was no increase in the emergency department visit so they did not uh, need to come back for a clot evacuation the only thing was that the patient who were on warfarin they had a lower rate of successful voiding a higher 90 day complication rate and more erectile uh, more ed visits in the warfarin group so uh, basically the conclusion was that it is safe and effective there were no serious complications or worsened post operative voiding parameters so all of these patients voided except a subgroup which was on warfarin now this is uh, another trial uh, which was published in 2019 and what they found was that uh, the operating time was similar the rate of post operative complication was similar the only thing which differed was a longer catheterization maintenance and a longer hospital stay so uh, this is what they concluded and they said that it can be done in patients and uh, there is only a slightly increase the hospitalization uh, stay and the catheterization time so uh, the take home message would be it can be done in cases who are on anticoagulants the technique remains the same for a beginner you need to use less energy for a better hemostasis post op irrigation as well as traction which can be just a penile traction rather than an abdominal traction the required for a longer time it may require a long term catheterization and hospital stay sometime the patient may stay for 3 to 4 days also if the irrigation is not getting cleared and oral anticoagulation should be continued in high risk patients so uh, yes it is doable and uh, i think uh, with the aging population we are getting more patients who are on these uh, thing and stopping these uh, anticoagulants is actually going to cause more trouble so uh, in my practice i haven't stopped uh, eco spin or uh, in the past one year almost all the patients can be dealt with the only problem with clopidogrel is that the anesthetic may be having apprehension regarding whether he is going to give the spinal or not so that is the uh, the bone of contention rather than so eco spin can be continued the other things need to be uh, studied at a more appropriate level yes if the patient is too risky then yes it can be continued uh, you can do the procedure but he may go home in a couple of days rather than next day thank you thank you thank you very much uh, crisp presentation uh now i will ask questions uh, both uh, pertaining to the anticoagulant as well as this technique because i am also doing my first question is uh see traditionally uh, enucleation is done by giving incision at the floor and at the roof then uh, making a trough which you have made between 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock after that come to the paraveru region uh after that incise the mucosa anterior and posterior and unite then each lobe median lobe first and then lateral lobe and then lateral lobe this is easy until to date people like dr anil varshney dr pankaj maheshwari sir are doing like that and they are very quick what uh, in last two years we observed is before i have learned directly go to veru para veru region give incision deep 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 extend laterally and then come anteriorly finish that mucosal part so called apex uh, sphincter releasing uh, mucosal incision and then you do either uh, by lobar tri lobar now other recently supported by uh, senior peoples like uh, uh, western countries and uh, european countries the, what they are doing is entire thing start retrograde don't look at the like which you have shown especially in medium glands you incise uh, veru again go to the capsule deep 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 little mechanical then it will level it will elevate on either side and then continue on to the anterior and then go to the retro pubic space continuously go there go there and then cut it i am not explaining i am asking when when i i also from day one got impressed with the n block when i started doing also but uh, after doing half of the surgery uh, getting exhausted to make a complete plane all around when thickness of the gland is maximum at the middle area so my question straight forward is when you make a space between the two lobes 
in large gland by incising in the beginning, do you have an advantage of uh, cutting with laser, not pushing? I'm not saying pushing. Cutting with laser by rotating the sheath towards the lateral surface of the capsule and then making the curvature. This is not a straight line. You go more laterally and then you turn medially towards the, this thing. When you go more laterally, you feel heavy for your hand. You get exhausted doing that uh, unless uh, like uh, um, you use uh, 2 watts and uh, 20 where it cuts so fast. You need not exert. But the problem with that is there is a big chance for a junior to go out of the capsule. I hope you are understanding clearly what I am asking. No. Lateral, so, part the, lateral part of the large lobe to do easily, what is the tip and trick? See, the tip is that you should always, uh, the fiber should be not at 6 o'clock. It should be at 12 o'clock because if it is at 6 o'clock, you are actually guessing. You are guessing that you are actually cutting at the capsule. Okay. Uh, the so your hand should be always up like this. Yes. I uh, mean. You have to train yourself for that. The thing is that when you are actually cutting from above, you are cutting from the, the roof towards the floor. So your fiber is actually also, uh, so the gravity is helping you. Now here, what you are doing is that at six o'clock, you are actually lifting, you are lifting and cutting. And therefore you may go here and there. And you may even leave the tube at the lateral regions. So that is important. The other thing is that uh, almost all the studies which have done, uh, uh, see uh, the, the technique with Dr. Vaishnayan I've been doing, they are good for very big glands because in a big gland, uh, there is a good defined capsule, a pseudo capsule has been formed. In a smaller gland, the pseudo ca the capsule is best defined at the lateral to the veru. So that is the reason that if you do a veru first and then you release the thing, the patient have a better outcome in form of incontinence. The other thing is the problem is at the anterior muscular uh, anterior commissure. So at the anterior commissure, since the uh, our uh, sphincter is horseshoe shape. So releasing that part is very important and uh, releasing that uh, with the, uh, with an up down scope and the fiber at the 12 o'clock is easier and better. So the chances of injury as well as pushing are less. So uh, do not anywhere try to uh, have some time. See, uh, enucleation is something which you cannot do in a hurry. Uh, so it is an art which you should be relish rather than just completing it. And uh, uh, yeah. uh, your hand should be, you should have strong shoulders. You should not be tired. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, 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 very, very large gland. If it is more than two hours, you, your shoulders will, uh, when I do laparoscopy for five, six hours, nothing happens. But somehow in enucleation, even if the table is kept low down, Especially monitors are not horizontal. That is a problem for me. I am sharing exact original because I am in the learning curve. Now I am better. Last uh, five cases, I don't have any incontinence. I am uh, understanding because Dr. Manas also accompanies. He, he learned a little faster than me uh, uh, because he was more interested. Uh, to convince uh, from TURP to enucleation itself, I have taken a lot of time. Uh, that is a problem. You should have uh, honest uh, uh, opinion that it can succeed. Then it will result better. Recently, we did 130 grams in contents was only for one or two days. Absolutely continent. 136 is the largest we have done. Uh, now, next question is, uh, when, you, when, you, when you do a, a nucleation, uh, you should come from top to bottom always, or you can do a little bit this side, little bit that side, mix, uh, combine like that, or you should follow only one pattern. What is your opinion? See, sometimes what happens, we try to do from, uh, from the uh, top to uh, top to middle and then we go uh, uh, then base and in between sometimes misses and you will go here and there. Then combining them is a huge task. Yeah. See, so, as, a, as a beginner, I am asking. Yeah. So, most important is that you define your plane. Uh, if N block should not be done for the beginners, I would not say at least do 50 cases. 
uh, of two lobe and then you can venture into an end block. Yeah, yeah. Even once it says that. It, it is already a difficult surgery, so why you make it more difficult? Uh, the other thing is that when you are uh, doing, uh, when you are making your troughs, when you are doing the 5 and 7 and 12 and 1, so when you have uh, developed the floor as well as the roof, you have already defined a plane where you know what is your limit. So whenever you feel that you are going here and there, just go to the area where, which is a defined area. Reorient yourself. All uh, cutting here and there will cause multiple uh, enucleation planes. So that should be avoided. And uh, whenever, uh, and it always happens when we are not reorienting, we are just cutting uh, in a flow. So whenever you feel that there is some bleeding or there is more charring, uh, you should reorient yourself. And then uh, uh, it should be a good cut. Uh, there should not be a hesitancy. The problem is that people can have two or three, four cuts rather than one bold cut. So most important is to have a bold cut uh, and then carry on with it. Releasing the mucosa upfront will always help. Uh, and therefore, as a beginner, or even when you have, you should do it. Uh, now, when you come a large gland at the bladder neck region, 50% to 80% hanging into the lumen of the bladder, then it will be floating. We think that it is going away. It doesn't go. Do you think that it is finishing? It doesn't finish. You, you have one side uh, mucosa nicely lifting, but you are going into bladder. And at this, you are understanding my point. Low will yes, be lifted, hanging, and we try to cut. It will be moving nicely, and the mucosa will be going. Almost you cross the uretric orifice region. By chance, if you touch the floor, it may touch. What is yeah. the trick? Where exactly at the bladder neck it should go inside? What is the trick? Yeah. The prostate is basically the technique of mushrooming. So when, if if you are not mushrooming the thing, if there is a very big broad base. And then you are trying to push it. What happens is that it will take the mucosa with it. So always thin it out laterally. When you have thinned it out laterally, it will not happen. Your laser fibers should not be distal. It should be more proximal. So you do not cross the boundary of the bladder. As I have shown in the video, just be at the bladder neck. Because there is some amount of laser energy which is traveling uh, in front of the laser fiber. So with that help, that strip will go. If you are going to poke it more or push it more, it is going to uh, cause a subtrigonus. So laterally, you need to thin it out completely. Once you have thinned it out, oh. there is an edge like a mushroom, then you take it out. Okay. Uh, when do you recommend incision in the anteriorly fibromuscular plane? up to the sphincter, in which conditions it is useful in the beginning? Do, do you ever do this or you do you directly go to the retropubic space? Incision, incision, 12 o'clock position, what I mean to say. So what, so far, uh, so when I, when I started my end blocks, uh, uh, in the initial five or six cases, what I used to do was that at 12 o'clock, I will mark uh, my proximal limit. So instead of an incision, I would mark a proximal limit. I take a deep groove there so that when I am reaching from retrogradally, I am able to uh, have a thinned out area and then make the window in the blood. It may okay. be e even if you cut anteriorly, you can do end block. Even yes, if you yes. cut anteriorly, you can end block. Yeah, now, you can do end block. Is, uh... the, if there is a median low, then. If there is a median lobe and you are doing an end block, then yes, uh, making that area will lead to a good out, uh, outflow and your vision will be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what exactly I wanted. If you have difficulty in entering and going, if you incise widely anteriorly 12 o'clock position, water outflow, but then you can sweep this side, this side and come down and then keep pushing. Then still it is called end block. Yes. It but is. Uh, uh, one division, me keep, keep the pressure, I mean, keep the pressure open and then you can have good vision with outflow. And uh, do you have any experience of smaller uh, sheets in block resection? Have you ever done or not done? No, sir, I don't have the access to those sheets. What laser you use, Tulium fiber laser? The company? I, I have a 60 watt Euro laser by IPG. IPG. I think we are all using IPG this good. Yes. We don't know about the quanta. 
that, that uh, I don't have experience. Somebody has asked a question, Deepak Nagatan, uh, that nice presentation, sir, which company Thulium Fiber Laser? We are using IPG. I am also using IPG, majority of the people. Do you have any experience with 35 watts uh, uh, Thulium Fiber Laser? Yes. So with a 35 watt, initially, I was not going beyond 30. Yeah. So I was doing all my enucleation by 30 watts only. Very good. So, so it, I, you mean you, it can be doable by small glands per egg? Before they yes, buy, if somebody doesn't have money, if they buy 30 watts for uh, uh, the stone, they can attempt less than 50 to 80 yeah. grams prostate easily. This is what so Mamsi, a strong favorite point. I, what, so the last, so the last uh, video which I showed, it was a 400 micron fiber, not the 600. So a smaller fiber will have a better uh, energy and even a 35 watt. I, your voice is breaking. Your, come, your voice is breaking badly. So, so uh, the last video which I showed was a 400 micron fiber, not the 600 one. So, if you are using a 35 watt machine, use a smaller. Do you think that 400 micron fiber cuts very fast? Uh, it may cut fast, rather. Actually, the energy like a 150 micron fiber would uh, deliver our energy much more better. So, that's something like that. So, the burnout of the fiber will be there. Uh, but it 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 yeah. may is somewhat fast, yes. Very good. Uh, for for end block resection of bladder tumor, also you keep the same setting. No, sir. For end block resection, I don't go beyond six watts. So it is one and six. So uh, for end block, it is one and six. For a bladder neck incision, it would be one and ten. Uh, beyond one and, ten, one and six is also beautiful setting for end block resection of bladder tumor. Yeah, very so nice. Bladder, you if you get the breeders. Uh, if you get breeders, do you think, see, majority of the people uh, in uh, uh, the homium person say that if you get bleeding, uh, same energy settings, they will keep the laser fiber away and coagulate. But in uh, thulium fiber laser, we have a coagulation setting, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, the resection setting. A coagulation setting is something low energy, high frequency, something like uh, uh, 0.1 and 100, something like that. Uh, do you believe in that coagulation setting? No. I, I feel that uh, fiber laser coagulation setting. See, basically, it is a laser which is a uh, which is a very good coagulation. So even if you touch the fiber with the same pedal, I don't change the pedals. I have hardly done that. So, yeah. uh, so, so the, the incision two watts and uh, uh, twenty joules is uh, sufficient for the coagulation. Two watts and twenty is sufficient if you touch uh, so nicely it coagulates. So, but uh, I don't know where this uh, coagulation setting given by the company will be useful. We have to evaluate. Uh, that also coagulates, honestly. That yes. also coagulates. That also uh, burns the, the uh, evaporates the tissue also a little bit. Yes. So we, we use that for ulcers. Like if there is a ulcer in the bladder, then that coagulation setting because it is it is a superficial spread. The spray spray mode type it looks like. Uh, it, it is like a spray mode of coagulation. Yeah, this, this needs to be here because settings in thulium fiber laser IPG is too many settings are there. Tomorrow yeah. you don't know somebody can may come out with much more easy settings. Like we have we have made fragmentation mode for stone 110 is beautiful for dusting. We have yes. made a paper with a, a fragmentation mode 110. Uh, with Nadiad, we have done uh, research on that. And uh, instead of going dusting mode, if you go with fragmentation mode 110. Oh, beautiful. It is beautiful dusting. Same like homium and maybe better than homium. Mm -hmm. My last couple of questions. Uh, do you think that the smaller glands, which can be finished in 15 minutes by TURP, a senior enucleation surgeon is uh, tempted to do that also enucleation in half an hour? Who will win the race in terms of outcome your personal? Because no paper, no study is confirmed. A very perfect you can see 30 40 grams gland comes bladder neck high not responding to alpha blocker even if you give incision you will respond even if you reject with trp 10 to 20 chips will come out even if you do enucleation it is not a big deal for the surgeon but for beginner enucleation it is very difficult because capsule may not be there so enucleation surgeon can he do enucleation for all the cases one person i have seen manohar uh, dogmatically saying that I do, after certain experience, fibrotic gland also I will finish top because homium laser is more like cutting. And uh, whatever you wanted to cut, you finish and the lumen will make. 
do you think in thulium fiber laser small glands is it easy practicable an entire trp can be replaced in the future yes sir yeah i haven't done a trp in the past 3 4 years you have not done i have not done uh, what we do is that in a smaller gland we leave the spray pad 11 between 11 uh, between 1 and 11 o'clock at 12 o'clock so basically so that there is no bladder next stenosis and uh, since it, it is a cutting mode laser uh, and end blocks are very easy it is rather an advantage with a, with a thulium when you are dealing with a smaller gland where where the capsule is not formed uh last question uh incontinence after enucleation was a huge discussion nowadays people are less afraid because of the mucosal release and lot of techniques have been described ultimate aim is don't go anteriorly that is at 12 o'clock towards the sphincter leave a little bit of mucosa gland will be less and by going distally 1 cm nothing will happen to the flow everybody is accepting below you can do a little bit uh, aggressive approach above you leave a little bit towards the bladder uh, i mean towards the uh, distal region so incontinence following radical prostatectomy is uh, significant and uh, it uh, goes up to 3 months whereas incontinence following uh, enucleation i have seen even first day continuous incontinence is there one week 90% it will be controlled so should uh, should we accept this a great uh, change in the perception of enucleation and future will be the enucleation do you agree with that yes yes i think uh, once people start enjoying the enucleation the results are far superior the rate of resurgery which can be more with trp would be less when we are enucleating so uh, we are at the era where this another 10 years we would have lot of youngsters lot of people who uh, will be established as enucleators uh, because of this uh, tfl laser almium since it has a higher learning curve still there are few people who are doing it and i have converted from holmium to uh, thulium i don't find that there is any marked difference uh, i have seen any bladder neck stenosis with uh, enucleation yes uh, i have seen uh, bladder neck stenosis in two cases and uh, uh, that was done by we had done an incision so it can happen sure thank you very much for nice talk and definitely this a very very quick uh, conversation between both of us will be definitely helpful for the juniors i think so even i am junior in this stage of the surgery maybe another one year i will take time uh, i i am understanding in every part uh the large gland more than 100 grams uh, time taken is around 2 hours for me uh, that 2 hours i feel long because we are adapted to doing all surgeries less than 1 and 1/2 hour now that is my only concern let's hope uh, i will also improve uh, with all these techniques and watching again and again the surgeries thank you ashish keep it up and uh, let's see any other surgical technique if you are well versed we'll come back in future thank you very much great, great sir it was uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity thank you